Welcome to part two of the CMT Research Foundation's CMT 101 series. In today's segment, I'll be discussing the genetics of CMT. This information is especially important for the next webinar where I'll discuss therapy development for CMT. You're familiar with how a recipe gives instructions for mixing different ingredients. You can end up with brownies or tuna salad. Change the recipe and you'll end up with cookies rather than brownies or chicken salad rather than tuna salad. In the same way, genes provide instructions for making proteins. Proteins are required to carry out various cellular functions. Proteins are made up of amino acids. The order of the amino acids determines what kind of protein it is and the ability of the protein to carry out its functions. Nerve cells require many different kinds of proteins to function normally. In addition, nerve cells require different proteins than muscle cells or liver cells. A mutation or a typo in a gene alters the protein which is encoded by that gene. A mutation in a specific gene will change the protein it encodes in different ways. One possibility is that a changed protein is produced. This changed protein either can't carry out its normal function, this is called loss of function, or gains an abnormal function that is deleterious to the cell. This is called toxic gain of function. Another possibility is no protein or less normal protein is produced. This is called loss of function also. Finally, too much normal protein may be produced. All of these possibilities occur in different forms of CMT. Inheritance patterns are also important to consider in CMT. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. In each pair, one is inherited from your mother and the other from your father. One of those pairs is responsible for sex determination and are called the sex chromosomes. Females have two X chromosomes and males have one X and one Y sex chromosome. The X and Y chromosomes encode different genes. The other 22 pairs are called autosomes. Each pair of autosomes contains the same genes, so you have two copies of these autosomal genes. Mutations can be inherited from your parents in several ways. Autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, or X-linked. If a gene is autosomal dominant, this means you only need one copy of the mutant gene to have disease. If a gene is autosomal recessive, you need two copies of the mutant gene to have disease. If a gene is X-linked, a male with the mutant gene will have disease, whereas a female needs two copies to have the disease typically. CMT is characterized by dominant, recessive, and X-linked mutations. How does one end up having CMT? Mutations can be inherited from your parents. Alternatively, early in embryonic development, an error occurs and a new mutation occurs in the DNA. This is called a de novo mutation or new mutation, meaning there is no family history of it. Some families have multiple generations of individuals with CMT as the mutant gene is passed from generation to generation, whereas in other families, CMT is due to a new mutation. CMT is not a single disease. Over 100 different genes cause the disease. These are genes that are either important for the structure of myelin or for the health of axons. Four main categories of CMT are recognized. CMT1, 2, 4, and X. These categories are based on whether it's the myelin or the axon that is primarily affected by the gene mutation, as well as the pattern of inheritance. Within each category, there are multiple subtypes designated by letters, thus CMT1A or 1B, CMT2A, 2B, etc. Each subtype is one specific gene that is mutated. Four genes make up 90% of all CMT types. CMT1A, 1B, 2A, and X1. Of these, CMT1A is the most common and is responsible for 60% of the cases. 
Some people with a clinical diagnosis of CMT, which means they have the typical symptoms of CMT, don't know which gene is causing their disease. 40% of people with a clinical diagnosis of CMT fall into this category. Even further genetic complexity exists than just having multiple genes or subtypes of CMT. Even within one specific gene, there can be many different kinds of mutations. Going back to the recipe analogy, the typo in the recipe could be in the amount of butter, sugar, or flour. These would affect the downstream cake in different ways. Same thing with mutations in a single gene. They affect the protein in different ways. For example, loss of function versus toxic gain of function. The type of change in the protein has implications for treating CMT. Loss of function has to be treated differently than toxic gain of function. There are three main take-home points from today's webinar. The first, nerve cells require many different kinds of proteins to function normally. In CMT, gene mutations alter the proteins needed for nerve cell function. And finally, mutations in over 100 different genes cause CMT, which means that a one-size-fits-all therapy won't work for CMT. I hope you'll tune in for other webinars in the CMT Research Foundation's CMT 101 series. In the next part of the series, I'll discuss therapy development for CMT.